another food experience I had was that when I was running for president, uh, I would eat crap all the time. And it was very hard not to because um, you would just be stressed out all the time and then mm. you'd be in a car and then what are you going to do in the car? I mean, what are you going to have, have for lunch? What What's around you? I mean, it's pretty much fast food uh, or we'd stop at a rest stop and uh, you know, you'd have, so I tried to get nuts and something not so bad, but then right next to the nuts are the chips, and the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's yeah. so significant, Andrew, that thing about, that key question you're asking, it's so revealing, it's, on a, it's so fascinating, it's on a presidential campaign as well, because what's around us, right? The evidence is overwhelming that we live in what's called an obesogenic envir environment, an environment that pushes us towards obesity. And, and what I found fascinating, for a long time, I was researching two different, what I thought of as two different questions that only joined at the end. One was, you know, we're pretty much the same age. When we were born, obesity was really quite rare. You know, um, in the United States, around 11% of people were obese, right? So quite rare. Between the year I was born and the year I turned 21, obesity doubled in the United States. And in the next 20 years, severe obesity doubled again. It has blown up to levels that are unprecedented in all of human history. You basically have 300,000 years of obesity being very rare. And then literally in our lifetimes, a majority of Americans are obese or overweight. If you want to get a sense of how weird this is, just everyone should just pause this podcast and Google photographs of beaches in the United States and say 1975. They look really weird to us because everyone pretty much is what we would think of as skinny, right? Or, or jacked. And you look at it and go, well, where was everyone else that day, right? Was, was it a skinny person convention on that beach? No, that you look at the population figures, that is what Americans look like. The average American now weighs more than 30 pounds, more than the average American weighed in 1960, right? So what happened? I was in, looking at that, how, why did obesity blow up so much? And I was also looking at how do these drugs work? And I thought they would join at the end because obviously the rise in obesity creates the demand for the drugs. But actually the same word kept coming up in both, in both investigations. It's a word we don't use that often in English, but we, most of us know what it means. Satiety, when you feel sated, when you've just had enough, and you don't want any more. And we all know that sensation from some point in our lives, right? It turns out there is very strong evidence that the kind of food we eat is profoundly undermining our satiety, our ability to know when to stop. Obesity has risen everywhere in the world that makes one change and one change only. It's not a collapse in willpower. It's not, you know, a rising greed. It's where most people move from eating diets that are predominantly whole foods that are prepared on the day to eating predominantly foods that are constructed out of chemicals in factories in a process that isn't even called cooking. It's called manufacturing food. And that food, which would be unrecognizable to all the humans who came before us, affects our bodies in a profoundly different way. And there's lots of evidence for this. I go through the seven ways in which this kind of ultra processed food makes us overeat. But there's an experiment that to me just absolutely distilled it. And um, it was done by a brilliant scientist called Professor Paul Kenny, who's at Mount Sinai in New York. He's the head of neuroscience there. And he grew up in Dublin in Ireland. And when he was in his 20s, he moved to San Diego and he quickly clocked, oh, Americans don't eat like Irish people did at the time, right? Much more processed and ultra processed food, junk food, sugary food. And like many an immigrant, he quickly assimilated and within a year he gained more than 30 pounds and he started to feel like this food he was eating was not just changing his gut but changing his brain and what he desired so he did this experiment to test it which i have nicknamed cheesecake park it's very simple he got a load of rats and he raised them in a cage and all they had to eat was the kind of food they evolved to eat over thousands of years you know natural food and it turns out when they ate that natural food they had some kind of innate nutritional wisdom. They would eat when they were hungry and then they would just stop, right? They, and they never became fat or overweight or obese. Then Professor Kenny introduced them to the American diet. He fried up some bacon, he bought a load of Snickers bars, he bought some cheesecake and he put it down alongside the healthy food. And the rats went crazy for the American diet. They would literally dive into the cheesecake and eat their way out, just completely slicked with cheesecake. Um, they, they would eat and eat and eat 
and eat. And all that nutritional wisdom that they'd had telling them to stop when they had the old food that they knew and understood just went out the window. And as Professor Kenny put it to me, within a couple of days, they were different animals and they became very severely overweight. Incredibly, he then tweaked the experiment again in a way that feels a little bit cruel to me as a former junk food addict. He took away the American diet and left them with nothing but the food they'd grown up with, the healthy food. And he thought he knew what would happen, that they would eat more of the healthy food then than they had in the past. And this would prove that processed food expands the number of calories you eat in a day. That is not what happened. Something much weirder happened. Once they'd had the American food and it was taken away, they refused to eat the healthy food at all. It was like they no longer recognized it as food. It was only when they were literally starving that they went back to it. Now, there's lots of evidence this is happening to us. The food we eat is completely scrambles our evolutionary instincts, completely undermines our satiety and leads us to overeat. But that word satiety also kept coming up when I talked to people about how the drugs work. What the drugs do is they give you back your satiety. In fact, one of the scientists who designed them describes what they give you as satiety hormones. But when you see it that way, you begin to realize, as one of the professors, Michael Lowe, put it to me, this is an artificial solution to an artificial problem, right? Processed and ultra processed food created this hole, this tremendous hunger, and then the drugs come and fill it in, in this complex and risky way. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Please do hit like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thank you.